In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase to rack your brain. When you rack your brain, it means you're trying to remember something. Sometimes when summer ends and school starts again, I run into students on the first day or during the first week of school, and I have to rack my brain a bit to remember their name. Uh, sometimes this happens at market as well. Customers who we get to know over time and whose names we know, sometimes when the market season starts, we have to rack our brains to remember who they are. So when you rack your brain, it simply means you're trying to remember something. You know that you know it, but you just can't quite remember it. When you're speaking English, sometimes you might need to rack your brain to remember a word that isn't coming to you when you're having a conversation. The other phrase I wanted to teach you today is the phrase to pick someone's brain. This is when you ask someone for advice about something or ask someone what they think about something. Maybe I want to buy a new car and my friend is an expert on cars. I might want to pick his brain. I might say, hey, can I pick your brain for a bit? Give him a phone call and say, can I pick your brain? I'm thinking of buying a new car. What do you think of this one? And then he might tell me. So when you pick someone's brain, it means you ask them for advice, you ask them for information, or you ask them what they think about something. So to review, to rack your brain simply means to try and remember something. Uh, you probably have this every once in a while. And to pick someone's brain means to uh, ask them, yeah, again, ask them for advice, ask them what they think, ask them for their opinion on something. But hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This comment is from Nucleonor. When the COVID-19 outbreak started, buckwheat, sugar, and toilet paper were flying off the shelves. In addition, protective masks were selling like hotcakes, at least in Russia. And my response, we had the same thing here with toilet paper. It was a bit of a panic. Thankfully, it slowed down. The strange thing is that Canada produces a huge amount of toilet paper. And so I'm not sure why people were so worried. So thank you for that comment. And uh, by the way, excellent use of both phrases to fly off the shelves and to sell like hotcakes. So yeah, I did find it a little confusing. Canada, I looked it up. We are the sixth biggest producer and exporter of toilet paper in the world. So when the uh, pandemic started, I'm not sure why people were so worried about running out of toilet paper. We literally produce it in mass quantities. Like we produce a lot of it. Uh, hey, I'm in my classroom. Uh, it's a little echoey. I'll try to fix the audio for you. Uh, it's early morning, so students have not arrived yet. Uh, and I just thought I would show you again what my classroom looks like. Um, some of you have seen this before especially if way back when you used to watch the live streams that I used to do in this room. But uh, yeah, I'm set up for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so I have enough room here for 28 students. My largest class is close to that. I think I have 27 in my largest class. Uh, and then my other class is quite small. I only have nine students right now, which is a little abnormal. Generally, our classes are anywhere between 15 and 30 students. I know next semester I have a class with, I think, 30 students in it. Um, got my projector fired up over there. I need to test some things. And I also have a TV because I often teach split classes. So I teach grade 11 and 12 French at the same time in the same room. So I'll use the projector for the one class and I'll use the TV for the other class. It's quite handy. Uh, and then my computer class that I teach as well is a split class. So it's nice to have one projector or one screen uh, for the one class and one for the other. But anyways, this is my classroom. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a couple days with another short English lesson. Bye.